Hello, this is uh, part F um, of the um, module on um, unit or on um, clustering. We're part of machine learning and cloud services. This is part one. Part one is clustering. We're at F. And this just tries to get you a better intuition as to the different things clustering can do, sometimes good and sometimes not so good by looking at a very controlled situation where I generate the clusters myself using Python. Uh, these are the Python code is available on GitHub. And um, we only generate four clusters in a very simple fashion. The clusters are at the corners of a, of a square of radius of side three. And we choose various radiuses. Uh, with different ones at each uh, at each corner, and uh, these are by definition called large clusters for these radiuses. We have small clusters where we multiply the radius by a quarter, and very large clusters where the radius is multiplied by 1.5. Uh, we will see various pictures which will show you how large, small, and very large look. Uh, when we do this, I generate 250 points uh, for each cluster. They have what is expected for perfect errors, namely normal Gaussian distributions with standard deviations, and well, actually equal to the radius. When I say one, I mean I multiply what I get with standard deviation one by the radius, and then add it to the to the center to get the answer. And we of course generate the x and y coordinates separately, and we use um, k-means with various numbers of clusters: two, four, six, and eight. And we can see different answers of various degrees of, of interest when we make different choices. Um, we get different answers every time we run this code. And uh, if you wish to get reproducible answers, there's ways in random numbers to always make the same set of random numbers. That's called fixing the seeds. And if you look, do this, you will find that the k-means clustering, if we use four clusters, typically gets the correct answers. But we sometimes get the incorrect answers, and we, we actually enhance that by reducing the number of iterations. Remember, I mentioned that the way to cope with the fact that you sometimes get the wrong answer is just choose different random center values. And um, 20 is the default in Python. We reduce that to get more incorrect answers to see what incorrect answers look like. Here is a simple initial case. Um, we have um, small clusters here. So these are very tightly, uh, hugely uh, dif differentiated. The clusters are very clean. And there's a sort of scatter, but the scatter doesn't, doesn't impinge on the other clusters. And when we did the clustering, it takes these two blue things, puts them together, and these two red things, and put them together. Of course, the uh, so you could use um, webplotviz. All this visualization is done with matplotlib. This is a giant, simple, total Python code. Um, so we specify in the title of the graph the number of clusters looked at. Um, if you want to illustrate MapReduce, this code can run in parallel. And as we'll see later, there there's a normal uh, Python definite. I mean. Normal actual k means definition of judging the quality, which is the mean distortion or mean error difference from the um, points from the centers. And we have a slight variant of that, which actually has some advantages in, the, in, one, in some pathological cases where we don't look at the mean but at the maximum. Because there's some solutions where the means are difficult to tell apart, but the maximums are very far apart. Iterations is the um, Number of iterations, per se, is defaulted to 20 in Python. And um, we also list the distortion, which is the measure controlled by this max mean variable up here. So here is the actual function, Python function, which just has arguments which uh, implement everything you want. The number of clusters, number of iterations. Um, 
what when we stop the level of parallelism and the and the criteria used for stopping. So these are just the arguments of a, of a Python function that we described on where the meaning of the arguments was actually described in the previous slide. All right, here we have actually a pretty clean answer. We have the usual number of iterations, 20. Um, the distortion is the error me 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 um, measure. The um, parallelism is one, which means it's sequential. And we have two clusters. And again, it did this before, took these two on the left as one cluster, and these two on the right as one cluster. Um, and here we have a very large solution. So when you have very large, not solution, very large um, choice for generating the, the uh, points, remember the centers are, uh, are here, three zero. So these are quite, not, quite well uh, distorted. And remember, they start off as slightly different sizes at each point. But we just multiply them by 1.5 to get the very large. We have the full number of iterations. And it actually, again, generates a pretty reasonable solution with, um, again, all on the left is one cluster, and all on the right is another cluster. Here we have another perfect case. We have 20 iterations. And we have the small solution where we divide the um, radius by a quarter. And you see it's very clean clusters and very clean solution. Perfect. Here we have um, a large set of clusters and a perfect, you know, precisely correct answer. And we're in good shape. 20 iterations. So there's not so much chance of getting a bad answer. Here we have the same thing with very large, um, par no parallelism, normal measure of um, error, and it gets uh, clean, obviously clean, good answers. Now here we made a mistake, and uh, that in six clusters when there are really only four, and it's done a pretty reasonable solution, it's chopped the two upper clusters into two. And uh, this is run with 20 iterations, so it's inclined to, um, uh, it's going to all loop over and get the right answer. All right, here we have another k means equals, I mean, six clusters. We only have one iteration. So we sort of maximize errors. And this one has done something rather peculiar. It's divided one of the clusters into three, not even the bigger, biggest cluster. So obviously, maybe it has started up with an initial solution with a lot of centers near this cluster. And it, it converged to that answer. Remember, these are, when I reduce the iterations, I'm converging each iteration. So we've got a stable solution. But we haven't run over different starting values. And so this particular set of starting values gave this somewhat distorted answer. But this is not a terrible thing, and uh, um, it's not a bad solution. It's just slightly peculiar. Here we have eight. We have 20 iterations. And we've done something slightly funny here. Eight, you'd naively divide everything into two, but we've taken the smallest cluster and kept it as one, and divided with the biggest cluster and made it three, and divided the other two clusters into two. Actually, not a, not a bad solution. This is 20 iterations, and it may even be the best solution in this case. Um, this time, I doubt if it's the best solution, but it's not a bad solution. We have one, one iteration. So it's not trying, it's not looping over iterations to find the optimal solution. And you can see we divided the smallest cluster into three and the biggest cluster into three. And everything else is divided into one, slightly peculiar. Probably not the best solution. This is a large case, not the very large. Here we have 
Well, here's an interesting case. Here we have k means of, we have number of clusters of two. We've um, actually got 20 iterations. And we've got a not such a good result, seemingly. We've actually taken three clusters and put them into one. Center here, and we put one cluster into one. Previously, the solutions we had in this case were two and two. We put this and this together, or this and this and this together. All right, you can also have other stable solutions where this and this become a cluster, and this and this become a cluster. All right, here we run it again, gain 20 iterations. We've sort of got a symmetry related solution. All of these problems have symmetry related solutions. Now again, we have three in one cluster, three real original clusters joined into one k means cluster, and we kept this very small k means cluster as a singleton. Um, but it's symmetry related because on the previous slide, we had a different set of three chosen. And if you think about that mathematically, that says, uh, these solutions are actually far apart in some sort of space because we have to move things a long way, but they have essentially the same error, error and uh, they're very similar quality. Remember, this runs with 20 iterations. So this is a converged solution. Here we have um, actually an example of a correct, what you might consider the most likely to be correct solution. We actually look at the so-called distortion. They're very similar in the two cases. And we can do an analysis actually to show that effectively these two things, three and one and two and two, have the same good measure of goodness. It's about 1.5 for both cases, and it's not so hot. You can even do a mathematical calculation, which we do on the next slide, to show that that's true. Um, and so if you think about this in some abstract space, we have the goodness of fit, the thing which, are, which, were, which is in a distortion. And if we plot that in some abstract way against the uh, values of the uh, cluster center, so which is really, a, well, in the case of two or four dimensional space, but I'm only drawing it in two dimensional spaces. Here we have two minima, and they're separated by a big hill. And it is one, if you somehow get into this area here, it's very difficult to jump over that hill. This is a classic problem with optimization. That you have minima, and you want to find the global minima, which in this case is here, the, the smallest value. But you can often get trapped into a pretty good solution or even a not so good solution separated by a hill. And it's very hard to climb that hill. And there are various strategies. Typically, annealing is the method used, whether with quantum or more realistically, just classical annealing. Um, notice if you are here and you just perturb it a bit, it comes back to the same solution. And these are stable solutions. They're not unstable, namely, they just accidentally got the wrong answer. And they're not on the top of this hill where if you perturbed it, it would run way down to one of these minima. These are totally stable, high quality minima. They're true minima. They're just not the global minima. And finding a global minimum of a curve with complicated function is obviously pretty hard. Because uh, um, when you're near the a local minimum, and this is a local minimum, it's not so obvious to you whether there is a global minimum. Think about climbing in the hills. You're in a valley. How do you know there aren't other valleys nearby or not quite far away which are lower? So to find the lowest point of the valley, which is essentially what we're doing here, is highly non trivial. All right, so here we um, point out that the mathematical difference when um, we have um, the two choices, either three joined together and one separated, or two and two, um, then we have 1.5 and 1.47. These are measures of the distortion, which are exact for very small clusters. Um, so, in fact, the three and one is actually slightly better than the two and two. Now we can get, we can, um, ch if we change the maximum distortion, if you think about the three and one, the maximum distances are much bigger 
than the two and two. So if you lose maximum distance as the measure of distortion, we will always choose the um, two and two case. Okay, so we can discuss this hill a little more and um, the symmetry related solutions. If we do two and two, there are only actual two solutions. You either join ones on the left together and ones on the right together, or you do one on the top together and one on the bottom. When you do three and one, then there are four symmetry solutions, depending which real cluster you make the one. And these um, six solutions, which for the um, K two cluster k-means problem, and they're all separated by hills. And one of them is a global, and the other five are local minima. They're all extremely stable and need big changes. And if you go to classes on complex systems, you will see you, you see the same thing in all sorts of um, battles, like the battle which uh, at the time I wrote these slides was on between Apple, Android, BlackBerry, and Windows, which has actually been won by Apple and Android, perhaps been won by an a Android. This was a battle between operating systems, and you eventually end up with, in this case here, one or two winning, and the same is true in political parties. The solution with lots of parties is not very, very stable, and you move from that minimum to a minimum which is two, two parties and democracies in, in a typical case. And they're very, you can see that historically in England, the United Kingdom where I come from, originally there were liberals, and conservatives, and then one day the liberals screwed up and the Labour took over, and now it's Labour and conservatives for a long, long time, and the liberals struggle. They they reinvent themselves and redefine themselves, because the liberals are more like the Democratic Party here, but they do, can't re retain the, um, um, the Labour position. So, and they show you, I mean, to go from you know, one minima to another, you can't just be, you need a jump, and that's a non-trivial thing to do. And you can't just be, you can't just move a little bit, you have to move a lot. You have to go up a lot, and then down a lot. And then you need to do tunneling, that's what quantum annealing does. You tunnel through this hill. Quite deep ideas. All right, here we have um, two and two. And this is rather messy, a, a very unsatisfactory solution. We have split one of the clusters in two and put, so we have two and a half and one and a half as our solution. Well, that's not very good. Um, I didn't, I was ashamed to even put up the parameters on this one. As I did this many years ago, I'm afraid I can't reproduce the parameters. I guess I've given up on parameters on all of these. So here we have a, K equal four, four clusters, and we've actually split the smallest cluster into two. That's pretty unsatisfactory. We join two large clusters. We've done one and three quarters here, and one and a quarter here. A very unsatisfactory solution. Um, let's assume these are one iteration solutions. All right, here we have another. This is a large set of clusters. Now we've done for four. We've um, Join two together, and then at the top, we've um, split one effectively into two, the, one, the largest cluster, and we've left this one as a one. So we only have one done correctly, the others are essentially wrong. Here's another messy case where we have, <coughs> this one is not so bad, it's almost one, this is definitely one. This one is one and a quarter, and this one is three quarters bled over into this. That's why I missed these ones. It was pulled over to here and captured these ones, which are probably really on the, this center here. So it got, and it's sort of interesting. This is a true, this is obviously converged as a minima, uh, but it's not the correct minima. It's quite, it's not good at all. Here we have, um, Actually, a small, very clean clusters, and we've taken. We have four four clusters. We've actually joined two together. That's pretty bad. We split this one into two, 
And with this one, we got right. So pretty unsatisfactory. Now we've gone back to the top. Here we actually have the correct number of iterations. We have two clusters, and this is really messy. Uh, we have one and uh, 1 2.6 in this one, probably, and 1.4 in this one. Not good. This had 20 iterations, so that's pretty pretty bad. Here we have um, six, six clusters. We did uh, three of them perfectly, and one we split into three, which um, might be the right answer. Here's another one. Here's our eight clusters, and we split two into three, and two we've got perfect. Not again, not a bad solution. 